Hello, welcome to another Sound of the Signs video. I'm really excited to talk about Capricorn today. Uh, my name is Seidel Schultz and I am a sound astrologer. My whole desire is to help you connect to the frequency and the power of your sound so that you can be heard. Okay, so let's dive into Capricorn. Capricorn, wow. <laughs> Capricorn is kind of an intense energy. And as I have been thinking about this video and what I really wanna share and what needs to be shared in this video, um, one of the things that just came so clear to the forefront was this, and I, and I have not shared this in any of the, the previous videos, so I'm excited to share this. So there is a planet that rules each one of the signs, and I, like I said, I have not talked about that in any of the videos. So if you're very brand new to astrology, hang on with me because this is like, this is a little bit, right? So um saturn rules capricorn it's the it's the ruler of capricorn and the ruler of, of the planet or the sign the planet that rules that sign kind of gives a little bit of a i want to say like it, it has a little flare on it right <clears throat> so saturn is a Saturn is the law of obedience, as I've shared before. Um, if you haven't seen my Saturn video, I highly recommend going and watching that where Saturn is in our chart is where is encouraging, where Saturn is encouraging us to pause before we take action. Okay, so Saturn is kind of like it, it's the law of obedience. In order for us to have the blessing or to have the thing that we are desiring, we must be obedient to the tasks or the frequency or the energy that will get us there. Capricorn is the only sign that I've heard a song with. <laughs> the song that I heard with Capricorn was, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Except then I heard Capricorn say, and there is no other right way. Now, when we talk about Capricorn in the shadow, Capricorn in the shadow says, I'm doing it the right way. There is no other right way for it to be done. Okay. Capricorn in the light says, this is how it's done. And there's no other right way for me to do it. And it's, it's a way for us to claim and be confident in what is right for us. So that doesn't mean, um, that doesn't mean like narrowing our perspective or or saying the only way I can achieve health is by doing this or the only way to uh, make money is is this way the only right way to parent for me is this way, it means that we are keeping our options open. And we are also true to ourselves and what we need in order to be successful and to have the ultimate reward. I, I say, you know, Capricorn is a very goal oriented energy. It's a very success driven energy. It wants to achieve the goal. It wants to experience progress. It wants to um, have success. Like these are, all things that are very important to Capricorn. And Capricorn is a very mental sign. So how we approach this area of our life will be more um, mental than it will be emotional. And we'll go over all of this. So, so many really good things in here. Um, okay, I had to let my cat in. Thank you for the pause. There's just so many good things that I want to share about Capricorn. So let me get started. Let's get started and take a look at a chart here and go from there. Let me share my screen really quickly. Okay, so here we have a chart for Capricorn starting on the first house. So again, I'm going to say just like I do in all of my other Sound of the Signs videos, um, 
we are talking about where the sign is cusping your chart or what house is cusp by Capricorn. And the reason why we're doing that in cusp means the start of or the horn of. So right here, this is the first house is cusping Capricorn right here. Yes, I just want to make sure I said that right. The first house is cusping Capricorn right here. So this is um, the, the body and, and our character, right? The reason why we're looking at where um, Capricorn is cusping is because this is like uh, the, the pivotal or the foundational moment or place in our life for this energy. So you can see in, in this woman's chart, um, her 12th house, Capricorn starts in her 12th house here, but in, in order for her to experience this Capricorn energy at a, a in an aligned way in the 12th house, she's actually going to approach it first from Sagittarius and then move into this Capricorn space. So we're looking at where Capricorn cusps, what house Cap Capricorn cusps in your chart. So I want you to pull out your chart and take a look at that because that will be really helpful for you to understand um, what I'm saying for you specifically in this video. Okay, so let's take a look at the, or take a listen to this Capricorn energy and what it's really saying to us. So many really, really good things. Um, and, and I really want to approach this video from the standpoint of, of this Saturn, right? And the, um, I heard one time someone say Saturn is Satan <laughs> and I agreed with that for a while, right? Uh, but Saturn is also a really great blessing to us <clears throat> and really helps us to be true and to be obedient to our laws the laws of us, right? So a couple of things that I will notice about the Capricorn energy. One, either Capricorn will be very aggressive or Capricorn will be very passive, right? So passive like everybody else has control or everyone else has a say about this area of our life or I have a say about this area of my life and everybody else's life. And so I'm really going to like push my view about this onto everybody else. So I want you to take a look at your chart and really ask yourself, what, like honestly, where am I at with this Capricorn energy? And uh, am I in a passive place with it? or am I in a more aggressive place with it? So um, I like, I'm just seeing this chart. I kind of, I kind of wish I had pulled up this chart. So I have a, a, a line graph made and, and here we have, so you're gonna have to picture it with me. You have passive aggressive, or you have passive, passive aggressive, right? Then you have assertive and then you have aggressive. So that's kind of like how I have them laid out on the chart. So to the two ends of the spectrum are passive and aggressive, right? So passive, I ignore myself and I only listen to everyone else. Aggressive, um, meaning I don't listen to anybody else. I only listen to myself. Um, and I don't really take anybody else in account. I don't take myself in account, right? Passive, aggressive, means like to your face, I am not gonna take me into account. But behind your back, when it's just me, I'm not gonna take you into account. So so you, we can see that energy showing up like, um, I'm not gonna say anything to you. You know, I'm mad. I'm not gonna say anything to you, but I'm gonna slam all the doors, right? Like in the kitchen or, um, uh, I was just thinking like a passive, like I'm going to tell you, this is a, an example of passive, like I'm going to tell you that I totally agree with you and then I'm just going to do whatever I want, right? So that can be really a, a passive example, passive aggressive. Um, uh, they like make cutting 
cutting statements. So they're, they're, they're too afraid to address it because they're worried about what's going to happen. Right. Um, and, and the conflict that's going to be there, but they still have that, like, I, I have to take care of it. So there's that urge also to, to address the issue, but then the underlying fear of addressing the issue. And then you have aggressive, which is just like, I'm not taking anybody else into consideration. Like, this is what I want. This is what has to happen. Um, and, and it is what I'm going to say, and it is what's going to happen. And, and the, I wouldn't say the middle ground because it's not quite the middle, right? Um, but the healthiest version of these is the assertive version. And assertion means I take me into consideration and I take you in con into consideration and I honor both of us. Now, that doesn't mean the other person always gets what they want. It doesn't mean I always get what I want. It means I'm taking the two into consideration and, and really applying um, the solution and applying communication from the standpoint of I hear you, I hear me, um, and we both get to be heard and, and we both get to like have a conversation about this. That is in the light Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy in the light is assertive. So if you're not in that place of, of um, feeling confident in yourself and your abilities and like the right way for you right you're going to step into one of the those other three passive passive aggressive or aggressive right and so it's it's really about this capricorn energy is really about owning ourselves and owning our knowledge in this area of our life or owning our I'm going to say like our place, like really stepping into into this place. So here we have a Capricorn in the first house. And we're looking at this with like um, confidence and success for our character and our body. Like nobody can tell me what the right way for my body to be is and really like one of the things that i hear so clearly from this chart is the ability to be assertive so i'm going to say it like that this is the ability to be assertive now if you're not standing in the light of that energy when you meet someone because the first house is like our rising sign it's how people experience our body how they experience our character how they experience our energy when we are one-on-one -on -one. like when we're first meeting them or um, when we're just like in their space when we're around their body or even like on a zoom call right and so if we're in the shadow of this we will not be in this space of assertiveness we will not be in this space of confidence within ourselves right um and so this is where the capricorn is saying i invite you to stand confidently when you're with other people i invite you to stand confidently and this is in the first house i invite you to stand confidently in who you are and and I invite you to stand confidently in what your body needs. And, and then when you're in that space, then you can hear what it is that your body needs and what it is that you like your character needs to continue to develop. Now, that's going to be the same with the second house. The second house is our value, our worth, and, and that leads into how we do our money. Okay. So like, um, I am confident in the value I have to offer. I am confident in my worth in this situation. So these are some like really great affirmations for those that have Capricorn in the second house. I am confident in this, right? And um, I can be assertive with my value. I can be assertive with my worth. And as we do that, then we kind of like take, um, I don't want to say um, the word that is coming is control, but it's, it's not control. It's like taking leadership, right? So um, 
in a, in a little bit of a different way than Leo. Cause I know like the last video I talked about owning your celebrity and really taking the lead. Um, so it is similar to that, but in, in a little bit of a different way. Um, but, but really owning your space with money um, for that, that, that second. But before you can own that space with money, you first have to own that space with your value and your worth. Okay, the third house, Capricorn, really with communication. So for those of you that have Capricorn in the third house, I want you to really watch and, and like kind of take note. Um, and this, this goes for all the houses, right? Take note on how you are approaching this area of your life. And because when you are aware of what you're doing, then you can make the change. Like, you know where your starting point is, and then you know what you're going to like, what you need to do to get here, right? You might not know all the steps, but you're like, I know, I know where I'm at. So I know whether I'm being assertive or aggressive. I know whether I'm being passive. I know whether I'm being passive aggressive. And then from there, that is the jump point. If we don't know where we're at, then we don't know what path we need to take to get to the place where we're going. We don't know. Um, like if, if I don't know that I'm being aggressive, then I won't know that I need to actually take a step back and consider other people in order to get to the place of assertiveness. If I don't realize that I'm being passive or that I'm being passive aggressive, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to know how to, um, um, address the issue, right? Or even where to go to address the issue or what, what it is that I might need to do. Even if we don't know it, we, we can seek out help from the right places and we can communicate that. Like I'm very passive and I want to be assertive and I need help getting there. Like that's what I'm, what I'm saying. So take a look at your communication. How are you with communication? What, uh, what is being reflected back to you about your communication? Um, and then you can kind of take a look at it. Now, obviously we're not gonna believe everything everybody says about our communication because people can project, but if there is a common theme among what people are saying, then it's an opportunity to really take a look at how you're communicating. Are you being passive in your communication? Are you being aggressive in your communication? Are you being passive aggressive? Or are you like in that place where you, you've really honed in and you're being assertive with your communication? Okay, then we have the, the home. And I wanna share this one because here we have Capricorn in the fourth house, right? So this is at home. This is at home with other people. This is feeling at home with yourself. So again, taking a look, how am I showing up in the home? Is this where I feel most capable of being confident? Yes. Like, oh, I just saw my own chart and I was like, oh yes, this is like that area of my life is where I feel most comfortable stepping into my confidence, right? So this is another way we can kind of look at that is like, okay, this is where I can give myself permission to be confident, right? And and, and the reason we are doing this, and, and one of the things that I love about all of these different zodiac signs is in this area of our life, it shows us how to do it. It shows us how to live it and accept it and embrace it and own it so then we can live it in other areas of our life okay because if i can if i can be like oh my gosh i feel so confident at home right I'm, and i'm now stepping into this place of feeling confident home um then i can be like okay i can take that feeling and like really be at home with myself wherever i'm at i can be at home with myself in one-on-one -on -one relationships i can be um, at home with myself in the public. I can be at home with myself in, um, in business and, and with God or, or the universe, like with my spirituality, I can do it in, a, in front of a group. Like it really is this place for us to anchor in. That's the word I was looking for in the beginning, anchoring in this energy. And that's why we begin by looking at what house cusps the, each one of these signs, what house cusps the energy of that. So we're looking at this. So am I aggressive at home? Is this a place where it's easiest for me to be aggressive? Am I really passive here? Now, I'm going to say this because 
Capricorn isn't known as a passive energy. It's not. It's just not. Like you think passive energy and people go way more towards Libra. But I am telling you, like I have known people with sun signs and moon signs, especially a moon sign. Okay. Like especially their moon sign in Cap Capricorn that are are not taking their space, their spot as the leader. They are not stepping forward and saying, I know what I need to do, right? So that Capricorn energy actually can show up as very passive when it's in the shadow. So how are you showing up at home? Okay, fifth house, how are you showing up in your creative abilities and your creations? So this doesn't mean, I'm not just talking about creation as in like, um, I arranged some music or I just sculpted something. I'm talking like, it could be as simple as I made dinner. Um, and like, this could be from a recipe, people. This is not feel like I made it up, right? Um, anything that we create, I created a clean room. I created a program. I created um, an email. Like it really can be anything that we create and we create all day long, I created an outfit. Um, that doesn't mean we have to be a, a fashion designer. Like, let's not take it to the extreme. Let's start it at, like, at, at a base level that we can really grasp and understand. And, and so we're coming in and are you owning your creations? Are you owning your creative ability? Like as if you're not, then you're in this like really passive place with your creations or are you like, or, or, or are you coming in and saying, we have to create right now and you need to do this right now. Like it, because I'm feeling uncomfortable, right? So this is again, where this, um, oh gosh, this is just what I heard. Like, I just heard this, like when, oh. <laughs> I'm just a little uncomfortable because I'm just seeing this in my own life. Okay. When we are, where Capricorn is in our chart, when we step in the shadow of this, when we're uncomfortable, it can be where we tend to be a little aggressive about it having to be done a certain way or having, having to fix it. Like I've got to fix it. It's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed. Right. Um, and so where is that showing up in your life? Like, are you taking like I'm pointing to Aquarius, I know, but like I'm really pointing to the fifth house, I'll fifth, fifth house it here, right? Are you like, we have to create this, this has to be created. Like it's just um, in order for me to feel comfortable, this has to be fixed right now, right? So that can be like the assertive, um, I'm gonna jump to the seventh house and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna come right back to the sixth house. So don't worry, I'm coming for you. But the, so Capricorn is in my seventh house. And, and I see this, like if there's conflict between, in, in an intimate relationship. So this, there isn't very many of those in my life, intimate relationships, like friendships. So we're not talking just spouse, right? We're talking um, in the intimate relationship that we have with ourself, in the intimate relationships that we could, we possibly have with our children. We don't always have intimate relationships with our children, but um, if that is a possibility in the intimate relationship that we have with our friends, and in the intimate relationship that we have with ourselves. So when we're taking a look at this, if there is something off, like there's something off in, um, in the relationship, this is where we can tend to be a little bit more aggressive and like, it's gotta be fixed. I, I need to fix it right now. Or we, we, we kind of like take a step back and we totally avoid the issue 100%. Now, I know that for me, if there's something going on in a, a relationship, my past self was like, we have to fix this right now. Like we need to talk about it. We need to fix it. It's uncomfortable. If it's not fixed, like let's get it fixed. Now, if they weren't an intimate relationship of, with me, I didn't care. Like it was fine. But if it, it, it is an important relationship, then it needed to be fixed and it needed to be dealt with immediately. And that included the stuff with myself. So when I felt uncomfortable with myself or something was going on in my head, it was like, I cannot do anything else until I fix this. Right. And as we stop and we, we take a step back and we kind of like take a deep breath and we go into this place of like, okay, I trust myself. 
I trust the timing on this, right? Which is, which is also what Saturn is saying, like trust the timing, take a pause, step back and take a pause, and then we can address it, right? Um, that's when we can step into a more assertive place instead of an aggressive place or go from this passive place to an assertive place, right? Okay, so that's seventh house. Let's like jump back and go, go to the sixth house. So the sixth house is daily actions. So this could be like our, our daily action steps that we need to take, like, um, how we approach our day and how we get things done during the day, how we take care of our health, <clears throat> um, whether that's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, like how are you taking care of your health? And so is this like, are you approaching your day in an aggressive way? Are you approaching your day in a passive way? Are you approaching your day in a passive aggressive way? Or are you doing it in a, an assertive way? Are you standing as that leader and standing in confidence that you know when it's time to take a step forward and when it's time to take a step back, um, when it's time to listen and when it's time to speak and like really like balancing and when I say listening and speaking, I mean like acting and doing. Like taking a second and pausing. Is it time to act? Is it time to pause? Right. So that's that that Capricorn energy in the sixth house showing up the sixth house. Now, eighth house, we're skipping to the eighth house. Capricorn in the eighth house. So the eighth house is the house of transformation. It's the house of death and rebirth. It's the house of other people's assets. So we're talking about transformation here. <sighs> like deep breath. I just like take a deep breath here. Here we have the eighth house right in the middle. You can see what house it is in the eighth house, right? So we're talking about Capricorn cusping the eighth house. Now, when you have this cusping the eighth house, this we're talking about, how do you approach transformation? And this could be, okay, I'm gonna, like, I know we talked about this and I, and I, I wanna talk about it kind of like in, in this way, right? So you've got creation, we talked about creating something. So you can look at like, I'm making a meal, I'm cleaning a room, like that's creation. We can also look at it from the lens of transformation. Like I, I'm taking the space and, and I'm transforming it, right? Um, so you can look at it those two different ways. And it's important that we create a distinction. What is it that I need right now? So for those that have like, okay, I wasn't going to say this, but um, I'm just going to share this. When you look at your chart and you're looking at the fifth house and the eighth house and the creation, like what, what you're creating and what you're transforming. If you're struggling to do something, right? So like you're struggling to clean something, you're struggling to put together a program, you wanna look at, you can look at both houses and really ask, which house is going to be the most supportive to me right now? What house is going to be the most supportive to me right now? Because really, maybe the issue that's coming up for you right now is not about transformation. It's about um, creativity. Or maybe the issue that's coming up for you right now isn't creating something. It's the transformation that's going to happen from the creation or through the creation process. Does that make sense? Oh, I just... I love astrology so much. I love this so much. So I'm, I'm thinking like, um, um, uh, my husband created a, a table extender for an old table that we had and, um, like, and the, the process of like creating that, like there were, there were these, were all these steps and he, he, it was, it was actually for, um, a family member. And so there were all these steps that needed to be taken to, in order to build the ex table extender in the right way. Like he was taking a piece of plywood and like shaping it. It was an oval table. So this was not like easy. He had to get the curve down and like we wanted to, he wanted to create stability, like all these things. And he's so detail oriented. Um, versus this family member who's not detail oriented and just wanted it done, right? So we're like 
talking about like, just get it done. And he's like, let's like the transformation process. We just need to like in the process, we need to have these things done in a specific kind of way because he wanted a specific kind of outcome, right? So when we're talking, so that's what I'm talking about is this transformation. So when you're looking at this in this Capricorn place, it is when it comes down to transforming or, or moving from one space to another space, like whether that's like, I, I, I'm here with my beliefs and I wanna be here with my beliefs. How then do you approach this? Are you um, approaching it from like this aggressive, why haven't I changed? Like I had this thought, I, I wanna be this different person. Um, why am I not that person already? Or are you approaching it from this place of like helplessness? Like I can't, there's no way, kind of like the, the victim mentality versus the, like I'm just saying like the victim mentality versus the villain mentality, right? And so you kind of have those two extremes here and again inviting you to take a step back and pause and be like okay this is um what i'm wanting to experience more of i want to be more confident as i'm stepping into a place of transformation because a lot of times what happens in this place of aggressive versus uh, I'm sorry, aggressive versus passive is we step into this place of ego. Both of those are ego. Even passive is a place of ego. Okay. Passive is a place of ego. So as we're stepping into this, when you step into ego, it's all about self, even passive, because this is self-preservation, right? And aggressive is getting what I want, how I want it, when I want it, right? Um, and this is still like passive is still about getting what we want, how we want it, when we want it. It's just about keeping us safe. And so we step back, right? It's, it's like, it sounds backwards, but it really is still an ego place, right? And so when we step back, we take a step back from both of those places and we step out of victim and villain and we step into mentor and teacher, that's when we can be in this place where we are victors in this area of our life instead of um, trying to save our life or have someone else save it for us. So again, stepping into this like <sighs> taking a deep breath, I can take my time, I can take a pause in this transformation. Ninth house, the house of teaching, the house of travel, the house of education and learning. So like I say education, I mean, learning, teaching, um, any, both of those and also travel. So how are you approaching that in your life? How are you approaching your learning? How are you approaching your teaching style? Like, and I'm saying like, I'm not asking, I'm not talking about teaching a class or are you a teacher? I'm like saying it could be anything from like teaching your kid how to tie a shoe or teaching your friend how to make sourdough, I don't know, sourdough is delicious, right? But like how we approach that teaching, how we approach our learning, like, and when I go to learn, saying my, like just using ninth house in Capricorn as an example, right? If my ninth house was in Capricorn, cusping Capricorn, um, am I impatient with myself when it comes to learning something? Do I expect myself to have it off the bat? like? Um, I heard this concept yesterday, and so I should just understand how to do it right away. Like, is there that impatience? And if there is, then we can kind of take a step back and be like, okay, I'm going to have a little patience here. And this can be the same with religion because religion really um, it is tied into that ninth house because religion is a learning. It's like a, a, a container for our learning about spirituality, spirituality being the 12th house. Okay. And then we've got the 10th house. The 10th house is how we show up in the world. Now Capricorn naturally um, rules the 10th house. So this is where it's gonna feel really, really natural and really good is in the 10th house. So it, it wants to put on a good face. It wants to put a good presentation on it. It wants to be successful. And so we're asking ourselves, okay, in this area, am I being aggressive with public? Am I being passive with it? Am I being passive aggressive with it? Like, where are you in that space of your public life? So this could be business. Um, this could be um, 
your job that you have. This could be what you're known for. Um, if you are a stay at home mom, like what does your community know you for? How is it that you're showing up? Um, kind of like how you're showing up in the world. Uh, and then you've got the 11th house. So the 11th house is known for a few, a few different things. So I'm gonna say hopes and dreams, uh, friendships, the internet, groups of people. This is like kind of how I want to talk about it today, especially with this, with this Capricorn energy, is it's kind of like a, instead of a zoomed in perspective, it's a zoomed out perspective. So it's a bigger perspective. So where the seventh house is one-on-one -on -one relationships, this is friendships in like added at more of a distance friendships or friendships in a group the internet is a a group of people right it's, it's a that technology right um but it's a group um our hopes and our dreams they're also not like our wants and our needs right our hopes and our dreams are a little bit further out so it you can take a, you can look at the 11th house as kind of like a more out there energy so how are we approaching our zoomed out energy how are we approaching technology or the internet like what is your relationship with technology or the internet you can kind of look at it and you can kind of look at it there just like you know i do these videos and i and i really hope that i'm bringing you information and understanding about your chart and i sit here and i'm like oh my gosh this is what it's saying like my 11th house i totally see it now and i hear like i hear it a little more clearly and i hear what i need to do and that's what i want for you that's what i want you for you so much is to be able to understand yourself at this capacity where you're like oh not only do i understand myself but i can actually hear what i need to do in order to make that switch right and again, whether that's hire a mentor, whether that's do specific action steps, whether that's like meet with me or take a class or or whatever that thing is, when we hear ourselves clearly, then we know more confidently what step we need to take. OK, that's what I want. So 11th house is how we are approaching that zoomed out perspective in our lives. How are you approaching your hopes and your dreams? Are you are you like, um, I've got to have it. Are you really pushy with them? Or are you like, OK, I'm taking a step back and I'm, I'm allowing um, the timing of these things to happen. Right. Or are you really passive? Like eh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. So like really taking a look at that. OK, now let's talk about the 12th house, our final house. The 12th house is the house of spirituality. OK, to me, it's the house and, and it's listed like it's it's known for um, the subconscious. Right. But I really hear it most as uh, as our personal house of spirituality, like my personal relationship with God or your personal relationship with the universe or your higher power, whatever that may be. But this is spirituality, spirituality. It's your personal spirituality. So this could be like, how, how do I view God? How do I view the universe? And do I view the universe? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to point down here. Do I view the universe down here as like exacting? And do I like, am I a victim to the universe? Am I a victim to God? Is, is God the bad guy? Is the universe a bad guy? Is my source the bad guy? Like, what does my relationship look like th with that? And how can I get to a place where I feel confident and we can be one on one? Like, I mean, like a simpatico right like we have a good relationship i have a good relationship and there's there's trust from me to my source and from my source to me does that feel so powerful like it it just really is so powerful when we have that connection to our higher power 
our source, it changes so much about our life because again, we can only see like a teeny tiny bit, but a higher power can see so much more. They can see the broader perspective, even I would say even more broad than the 11th house. So we've got hopes and dreams and here the 12th house, we have got eternity. We have the expanse of where we're going. How are you approaching that? Okay, that, what, like, what an exciting, what an exciting video. This has been so good for me. I hope it's been good to you. Like, I wanna know what is the one thing that stood out to you the most and like really hit you to the core as you watch this video. Okay, if you liked it, like and subscribe for more sound videos, sounds of astrology. Okay, we'll see you next time, bye.